Hello Popcorn Junkies, uh, this is a new Marvel Cinematic Universe trailer. My god, all we've had this year has been Deadpool and Wolverine, which was great fun. Um, and Agatha All Along. What a weird title, Agatha All Along. Anyway, anyway, um, Marvel are trying to do that thing that they need to do, which is starve us of Marvel content so that we're all clamouring at the doors of Marvel Studios and bashing at Disney, at the, at the, at the portcullis of the Disney Palace, screaming and squealing, for God's sake, give us some fucking superhero stuff. So what have they done? They've made Thunderbolts. Now, Thunderbolts is a curious title. This is one of those, I have to say, it's one of those comic series. I mean, you know, I've, I, you go into a comic store, you're flicking through the comics and you come across Thunderbolts and you sort of think, hmm, it's weird. I don't know if anyone else feels this who's a comic book reader, a comic reader and a comic fan. Does it feel like the studios are kind of honed in on some, sometimes not the best stories or the best groups of heroes or villains or characters. I mean, sometimes they're home in on the right ones. They're home in on the ones you have to home in on, I suppose. But I mean, like even Superman Legacy. Why? Why Why are we going back there? Why don't we do something different? Why don't we go the route? Why didn't they not do Superman Legacy? So I'm going to go on one now. And instead, I don't know, do an origin story like the Joker, but for the Riddler with Paul Dano, a fantastic actor. I, I don't know. It just, it just, anyway. I think where superheroes and comic book uh, sort of franchise films, the only place they can go is where kind of, kind of Guardians of the Galaxy went, which is irreverent, kind of grown-up skewing humour or grown-up skewing psychological thriller. If you think of the Joker, if you look at the Penguin even, uh, and if you think of the Batman, I mean, I think in a weird way, DC is successfully going so dark uh, that uh, they're going to kind of corner that market. So for Marvel, they, I think that the only answer here really is for them to go scatological and ridiculous. But even then, people get really up in arms, like with Thor Ragnarok, don't they? And they go, oh, it's not right, it's not right. I mean, one thing they must never do again is make the Marvels or the Eternals. Oh, God, all that kind of just avoid all that stuff and i can't do multiverse anymore i hope to god there isn't multiverse stuff in this film it feels to me this is marvel's answer to suicide squad am i right it's kind of like pulling together a bunch of misfits or anti-heroes as they call them uh one of them being uh david harbour who plays red guardian who's the sort of slightly overweight kind of russian captain america which kind of makes him captain russian Captain Russia, does it? You've got Florence Pugh in there as, uh, what's her name, Yelena Belova. Uh, you know, Black Widow's sister, isn't she? Or, or friend, or, or she was in training or something. She was captured in captivity, something like that. Got Sebastian Stan in there. What I'm really hoping with this is we don't have to have a guidebook to all the other Disney Plus series that none of us could be bothered to watch on Disney Plus, to be honest with you. I mean, I, I, no one could be more excited than me at the idea of a constant source of Marvel content. And then it just quite quickly degenerated into cardboard. It was just like boring and it was just predictable and it was just never, ever got back to WandaVision. So, um, so I think David Harbour, I'm hoping this will be funny. I'm hoping it will be kind of rule breaking. I, I, I hope it will have a little bit of what Deadpool has. And I, I have to say, I think this is the only way Marvel can go. Like, fingers crossed. F fingers crossed this could be funny. I just hope it doesn't take itself seriously. I've just, it's something weird has happened. We always characterise uh, characterized ourselves as a sort of Marvel family rather than a DC family. But right now it's all a bit fluffy and a bit silly uh, and a bit kind of mm, predictable. And it's just not firing on all cylinders. So let's, let's hope this is good. Anyway, Thunderbolts, this is a teaser. I click leave on porch. Your subordinates will be reported to DoorDash HQ. Alexi, it's me. Open up. Milena? Oh, Milena! Hi, Dad. Sorry about the wait. Uh, it was an important call. Highly classified. Lot of work, lot of work. Many irons in fire. You feel fulfilled? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so full. So filled. But why do you ask this? What, uh, what brings you here? So full, so full. Funny. There is something wrong with me. In emptiness, I'm just drifting and i don't have purpose i thought throwing myself into work was the answer
I'm Bob. Who sent you, Bob? Nobody. Were you all, you were all sent? Everyone here has done bad things. Shadow ops. Robbing government labs. Contract kills. Yeah, so? So, someone wants us gone. with this belief that there are good guys and there are bad guys. What's the plan? This could get messy. But eventually, you come to realize that there are bad guys and there are worse guys and nothing else. Look at you. So adorable. Don't worry. She's bulletproof. What happened to bulletproof? It's bulletproof-ish. Is that Bucky? That's not good. I never really recovered from the line there from David Harbour. Uh, yes, so full, filled. Are you fulfilled? Yeah, I'm full and I'm filled. I love that. It's such a great question. Um, I think the way forward for, and this and that trailer teaser kind of takes us there a little bit. I think the way forward for Marvel is they need to kind of do what Joker kind of did, which is they need to indie-fy, I think, their, their, their brand. Do you, do you know what I mean? I think um, if I was Kevin Feige, the head of Marvel Studios, I would say, right, look, let, let, let's not have stupid kind of salaries for all the stars. Let's try and make an, a, a Marvel film on an indie budget and see what we come up with. And I think if he, were to throw, if he was to quite, quite seriously throw the gauntlet down, with some key characters from, from the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the comics to some indie filmmakers to kind of innovate, like the, like the guys who made Talk To Me and stuff like that. Because I think the reason I'm saying that is I think there are moments in this that look really good. I mean, that whole sort of section at the front there in, uh, you know, Red Guardian's kind of flat and him looking like a down and out and a drunk and a pisshead. Um, and, you know, even the very fact that she looks like she's playing, she's a cracking actress, Florence Pugh, you can't, I, she can do no wrong for me. Uh, Sebastian Stan, I always find a bit kind of samey, even when he's got a talking penis, you know what I mean, because that's from Pamela and Tommy. Um, but even the whole Florence Pugh, I thought work would kind of fulfil me, and she's kind of looking aghast almost as there's the explosion in the tower block behind her. I think that's quite a nice touch. The idea that they've kind of, you know, the work, the kind of day-to-day -day grind of doing either heroic things or villainous things with your superpowers is just a bit tedious and a bit dull. And then they bring them all together in this strange sort of, you know, warehouse room. I'm looking forward to Wyatt, whatever his name is, the kind of, you know, sort of pseudo, not quite up to the grade Captain America with quite a bulbous head type thing. He doesn't look cool, does he? But he's a great actor. Is, am I right in thinking He's someone famous's son, isn't he? Isn't he? Is he Kurt Russell's son? I think he might be. Um, and then a the bunch of them all coming together. It's still, it's very Suicide Squad. I'm getting a very suicide squad, squaddy type thing, which is hard because James Gunn really took that to ludicrous levels of kind of rudeness and just breaking all the rules and being just totally offensive. Um, nice fight scenes, nice sequences. I just, again, as it starts to slip into the kind of standard sort of smash them up kind of action stuff, they, I even felt they were using those great big words in the trailer. They were very uh, sort of reminiscent of the Suicide Squad uh, trailers to, you know, that kind of very graphic kind of in your face sort of thing. A bit of humour. It's bulletproof, bulletproof ish. Mm, it's kind of funny. Um, you know, I, I genuinely think, you know, and Julia Louis Dreyfus, she, she looks good. She could be quite piss takey. This is the anti Avengers, isn't it? This is the kind of inverse of the Avengers. This is the Avengers, but mucky. The Avengers, but without class. But 
and I suppose the hope is that they become the slightly cooler Avengers and Marvel can sort of, I don't know, perform a strange kind of acrobatic twirl where maybe the anti-Avengers become as successful as the Avengers. Uh, I'm not too sure, but I genuinely think this has given me an idea, though. I, so we all have to find up Kevin Feige at Marvel and say, look, fucker, try and make a fucking Marvel film for just... This isn't even an indie budget. For like 25 million. That's big. Not 250 million. Try and make it for 25 million and see what you come up with. Because you could end up making 10 for the same price and five of them could be so inventive and sensational. And there were moments in this that kind of spoke to that indie sensibility. What do you think? Are you excited about this?